hello internet and today's video is going to be my january wrap up and i did really good this month like really really good i have read a total of 23 books so let's go through some stats i've read a total of 23 books 15 are books that i've already owned eight of them were just ones that i borrowed from my library i read two in the physical copy 17 were on audiobook and four were ebooks as you could probably tell i read a lot of audiobooks i just have a lot more time for them because i read them while at work while walking around campus all this sort of stuff so all of those hours in which I can't just pull out a book and read I can at least listen to one so I get through a lot of audiobooks throughout the day so first we're going to go over all of the books that I don't own in physical copy so that they're not left behind first we're going to talk about some graphic novels I read Lumberjanes 1 and 2 I know Noelle Stevenson is on the team that does this so that's why I picked them up there are plenty of other authors these two are graphic novels following a group of girls and they go to a camp called the Lumberjanes and a bunch of magical weird shenanigans stuff starts happening happening around their troop and their troop is trying to figure out why all this crazy stuff is happening. This graphic novel series has a lot of queer themes, transgender characters, lesbian characters, bisexual characters, and such. It was very very enjoyable so I really liked it. The next graphic novel I read was In Real Life. This is about a girl and she ends up joining an MMO and she meets friends and stuff online and things like that. I don't know what I was expecting out of this it was like it was fun but like not something that I was like yeah I was just like well I guess that was something I read then I read the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime this was a ebook I think the author's name is like mark something but this is about an autistic kid I'm not quite sure what form of autism he has but from what I could tell from the book he has a hard time um, translating feelings and emotions so he cannot read facial expressions at all and he ends up finding one of his neighbor's dogs murdered with a garden fork and it's just about how he's seeing the world him trying to figure out who killed the dog and has a lot to do with like his parents and his life issues and stuff like that and just his perspective on these things. Then we have And Every Morning The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer. This is a very short novella by Frederick Bachman. I of course read it because it was by Frederick Bachman. Um, I listened to this on audiobook and it's just a really short story about a grandson who is losing his grandfather and just like all the little emotions that go down when you lose someone who you really really love and it's just like a goodbye letter to like your loved ones and it's just a really sweet little short story then we have the fifth season by NK Jenison I believe I read this because Sam over at Thoughts on Tomes like got really really excited about it I was interested in it because of her and I'm not quite sure if this is fantasy or sci-fi um, because the way that it's categorized I just know it's an SFF book but like reading it I couldn't really determine which one it was point is this is about a world where there is a fifth season that just annihilates humankind it's like the earth just trying to destroy you with natural disasters and there is a special like species of human that kind of have some sort of dominion over and control over the earth and like can control it with their powers and because of this they have been enslaved by society and it follows the life of this one character and like this whole long journey of a fifth season of like these people rising up and like this whole system of stuff. I like this book but I think I will like the next books in the trilogy more because this first book it took me a while to get into it because it's like really like high fantasy sort of stuff and it wasn't like I didn't really get into it until like the later scenes because it wasn't a book you could space out on and I think I spaced a few times so it wasn't towards the end of it that I really got deeply invested even though I enjoyed myself so I got the second book on audio and I'm planning to listen to that it is a really good series then we have the Penny Royal Academy I can't remember who this is by but it's about a girl who has like amnesia she can't remember like her name 
name or anything like that. She has memory loss of who she is. She ends up going to this royal princess academy called the Penny Royal Academy and in this they train girls to become princesses because princesses are the only people who can fight off dark witches and this year at the Penny Royal Academy they decide to take in all sorts of girls to train them to be princesses whether it be commoner or royal and she ends up going along because like she just wants to kind of figure out who she is and stuff and this book was okay but it just followed along the same beats where it was like you had so much potential here and then you ended up like throwing it all away so I don't really like this book even though I really like the concepts but I'll talk more about that later. I think those are all the books that like I borrowed so I don't have in physical copy and also we're going to move on to the books that I do have in physical copy. I have like this shelf over here so we'll go through all the rest of them. So first we have Beartown by Frederick Bachman. This was the first book that I finished in the new year. I was listening to the audiobook at the end of 2017 but I did not finish it until 2018 so it counts as my first 2018 book. This is about a small hockey town and the people in it. Trigger warning this does talk about rape culture and it does have a whole large conversation about that. So it is a very good book. Five out of five for me. I love Frederick Backman and just how he talks about things but I would like to warn you because I did not know about that I just thought it was going to be like Frederick Bachman usually just makes mundane things be really really interesting so I just thought it would be me getting to know these characters and just average everyday things not like such a serious topic such as rape culture so I was really surprised and it just like kind of jolted me so I want to warn anyone beforehand in case that is a triggering topic to you that when you go into this book that is something that you're going to have to be aware of. I think he handles it perfectly so five out of five. Next book that I'm going to talk about is Echo by Pam Munez Ryan. I read this on audiobook and I suggest everyone read this on audiobook. This is a story about three kids and how their fates are tied together by this one harmonica. The whole book takes place over a World War II period starting in Nazi Germany right before Germany becomes Nazi Germany then moving on to the U.S. during the Great Depression and then on to the U.S. right after Pearl Harbor and the U.S. gets involved in World War II. If follows two boys and then one girl and their journey and how they're connected through this harmonica and just how music kind of makes their their struggles a little bit easier to handle. It is a very very beautiful beautiful book. I highly suggest audiobook because in the audiobook they play you the harmonica music so you get more entranced by the story that is about music because you get to hear the music that is being played that is being spoken about and it just it brings the story together and it gives it a lot more heart than you might than you might experience if you're just reading the words and reading the names of these songs but you're not hearing what is actually being played in the course of this story so five out of five then we have the first two books in a trilogy we have girl at midnight by melissa gray and then the shadow hour by melissa gray so this is a whole trilogy i read these ones on audiobook i bought them because of their cover i actually bought the second book at a used bookstore the third book at a used bookstore and then figured i might as well order the first book so i've been staring at these for a while because i never really knew what they were about other than the covers were pretty and this is a story about two warring people who live in like an urban fantasy contemporary world while well, these two people are like at battles one is this avian sort of bird like sort of species and one is a dracorian dragon type species these two species have been at war forever and ever they can't even remember why but it's talking about a human girl named echo who gets involved in this world at a young age and knows about the avians and she ends up getting sent on a mission by her foster mother to try to find this special thing called the firebird because it is said that the firebird can somehow stop the war between two people and bring about peace so a lot of people are after it because whoever controls the firebird controls the end of the war so this is talking about this whole little world that's going on in the background that humans aren't 
really fully aware of. I like it so I'm excited to kind of finish it but this series is more like a quest like series and for me personally I like seeing a lot of build up in the world as well. I love this series because I love the quest portions but there were some parts where I thought it could be like expanded a little more in my personal opinion because there was a lot of things that were mentioned that I was more interested in rather than the point A clues sort of quest sequence that this series goes along with. The next book was a reread for me and this is Octavia E. Butler's Fledgling. This is about a vampire named Shori. She ends up getting amnesia because her whole little village of vampires is burned to the ground and during the healing process her brain and head has to heal as well and she does not come out of it with memories. So it's her creating like a new little harem of symbiotes and her trying to figure out what happened to her family and how to be a vampire even though she's 50 years old and she has no experience at all because she's forgotten it. I just like this world of vampires because I like this idea of symbiotes of vampires having humans in which are like their little family that they get blood from and in return these humans can live to be like 100 200 years and the symbiotic relationship that goes down and I just like how Octavia E. Butler writes in like real world issues and conflicts into her stories and just I like the, her stories so this was like the 50th time I've reread this book and I loved it yet again like what a surprise. The next book that I read was Girl Man's Up by Emmy Gerard. This is about a young girl named Penn. She's struggling a lot in her life because of the way she dresses. She dresses very masculine and very much like a boy. She likes video games and she gets a lot of shit from other people because of it because she's not acting like a proper girl or she must want to be a boy because of the things that she likes and the way that she dresses because she likes girls and all of this sort of stuff and it's just a book about a person who wants to be who they are where it's dangerous to have certain stereotypes, certain categories that we fit everyone in because she is a girl. She identifies as a girl but she constantly has to get shit because she doesn't look like the traditional girl or because she has a lot of guy friends or like all of this sort of stuff. It talks about like toxic relationships that Penn has and how you're gonna have to kind of look out for yourself and learn how to be yourself despite what everyone else is going to say about you and that you need to make sure that you surround your people who are going to love and support you and not make snarky comments about how you should be like this or you should be like that. So I really like this book. I like that there was platonic female-female relationship. I like the older brother and how he was so su supportive of his sister. I like the relationship that happens and I just like this girl slowly discovering how to be comfortable in her own body and how to be more apathetic towards the world around her because it is not their opinions that matter and it is not their, her, their opinion that are going to make her happy at the end of the day and there are people out there that are going to accept her for who she is and not try to say bullshit about her all the time. She just needs to go out and find those people. Next we have Highly Illogical Behavior by John Corey Whaley. This is a very short book. This It has two perspectives. One about Solomon who is a kid who has been stuck in his house for the last three years because he has, I can't remember what it is, but like that fear of going outside and whenever he leaves his safety of his personal environment he ends up getting horrible horrible anxiety attacks and during middle school he had one so so tragically bad that he has been secluded in his house for a really long time and then this girl named Lisa who decides that she wants to get a special scholarship to go to a school that will pay for her whole psychology major so she's going to psychoanalyze Solomon and fix him for the sake of writing a good paper so that she can get this scholarship and leave her small town. I like this book because it has both perspectives. It tells you the story of Solomon from Solomon's eyes and then it shows what the rest of the world is seeing and like how unethical Lisa is being in this idea that she just wants to fix Solomon. I liked how this book stressed the importance that everybody has deep-seated issues that just hold them back in life and some are people have diagnosed ones but some have some serious problems they need to realize as well and it's not so much that we need to fix all the problems we have but we need to acknowledge them and try to find workaways for a way where we are not going to break down but we can still be comfortable and that people don't need fixers they need friends and if you have friends that can stand by you 
even though you have like all these issues then you can work through them yourself and it is about fixing your own issues yourself if you need to but needing friends to support you and surround you and love you despite all of the crazy issues you have and I just I like that this book talks about a mental disability that you have and it's not like a physical one and like all the things Sol Solomon gets from the outside world because he doesn't physically look like there's anything wrong with him even though he has a serious disability that holds him back in certain ways and like his different workarounds it's just a really good book okay it's a really good book so I'm gonna stop talking about it next we have Frederick Bachman's my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry this is about a young seven-year-old girl whose granny dies and leaves her behind letters for the young girl Elsa to deliver to different people who live in their little condo flat space building area this is actually a prequel sort of book to Burt Marie was here Burt Marie is a character introduced in this book so if you are going to read Burt Marie I would highly suggest you read this one first because you kind of get why the book is called Burt Marie was here in this one you get introduced to who she is and like what goes down that leads to that other book um I don't think it has to be read in a particular order but I would highly suggest I just like this book because I love the way the story is told I just I like how Frederick Bachman tells his story and I just I like this little girl the best I like um Elsa because she loves comic books and Harry Potter so she makes references to them a lot of the time whenever someone says something about like oh they don't read about Spider-Man she's like how can you not read quality literature and I just I love that because that's me that's me every day all the time when someone's like oh why would you read that or that's for kids and I'm like Psh, you're not reading quality literature I can read about Spider-Man if I want to. So this was a really really good book. Five out of five stars. Then we have a duology which is The Savage Song and Our Dark Duet by the Victoria Schwab. This is her young adult series. I really really like this. I have like mixed feelings about the Darker Shade of Magic series. I've only read the first book but I plan to read the whole trilogy but I really really like this one. So the basic premise of this is there is a t small town city called Verity and for some reason one day a violent act started growing monsters. Out of all violent acts but depending on the verity and the height of these acts certain types of monsters will be born so it's like really bad to kill someone because you'll end up creating a monster this follows two main characters a girl named kate who is basically a mafia boss's daughter and she wants to be this ruthless badass like her father is to be accepted and then about this kid named August and he was born of violence so he is the special type of monster who can kind of see souls. The first book was okay and I liked it and I liked the introduction of this world and these characters but the second book is what gripped my heart and I love and I just I like the whole thing because I liked how this series was about violence begets violence begets violence and the only thing that you're going to get returned in violence is more violence like that that's just the basic premise and I just I love this whole duology but this second one five out of five like this is one of my favorite books that I have read because it did something at the end of this book that I was just like yeah that's how that's how you're supposed to do that so I'll I'll talk more about that later then we have Fearless by Cornelia Funke. This is a mirror world novel. This is the second book in a series. This follows Jacob as he tries to figure out how to survive this fairy curse that he has on them. I've done a video about this and how I feel about it. I was okay with it but I was kind of disappointed because I thought there was so much potential for us exploring more of this mirror world because it had very very fascinating concepts in it and I would have just liked more from it because this book has a habit of telling me what's going on but not really showing me what's going on so next we have the rise of io by wesley chu i actually really like this author and the world that's built in here but i wasn't a real fan of this book because of the main one of the main characters io she was a massive raging bitch or they were a massive raging bitch so this is about a 
world in which an alien species landed on the earth billions and billions of years ago when the earth was first coming into its own and they can attach themselves to the beings of earth and they choose hum humans as their host a long time ago they factioned into two different sections and these sections have been at war for a really long time this young girl in india she ends up getting to be the host of this alien species one of them called io and I Ayo is just horrible to her and I don't like Ayo at all but I like this concept so if that sounds like an interesting concept to you this alien working in conjunction with a human and them sharing a body and having this sort of symbiotic relationship because these aliens have this really really large brain so it's like having a little computer in your mind that gives you advice and mentors you and stuff then I would suggest maybe reading his original trilogy Lives of Tayo. I haven't read it but Tayo is in this book as a character and I like Tayo and Cameron and their relationship as this like side of sort of hybrid alien human person thing than I did Io and this girl because I'll just I'll explain later Io was a massive raging bitch and I don't care I don't forgive them they were horrible throughout this whole book they're just I had hopes I had hopes but this was a book that I read like raging I was raging in this book because of Io I just hate her next we have the book thief by Marcus Zusak this takes place during World War II it is told from the perspective of death and death is talking about this young girl he has seen for a really long time in her story of how she just stole books and like learned the power of words and stuff I think this is like a five-star book but it wasn't like my five-star book it didn't hit me here even though I objectively understand that this is a really really good writing really really good story but like I liked it but it wasn't like my new favorite or like I was just aghast at this book but it was like a really good book so I can see why so many people praise it all the time and I'm like I'm happy that I read it but I don't like see myself rereading it I think my favorite part about this book was that it was told from the perspective of death which I found really enjoyable because I just thought death was like a fun character to listen to and he was really interesting next I read Skull Duggery Pleasant by Derek Lanley this is the first in a series I picked this one up because I'm a fan of fan fiction and a lot of times when I'm scrolling through I saw that this fandom was a pretty big thing and they have a lot of fan fiction and I was like wait what okay I'll, I guess I'll buy the book so I saw it at like a secondhand bookstore and I was like well why not so this is actually a really fun book this is about a man named Skullduggery really Pleasant he is a magician who died and then came back to life by possessing his bones so he is a skeleton detective it, it's like an urban fantasy and there is this special part like the mysterious world that most people don't know about of like magicians and all of this magic and stuff so he is currently trying to figure out who killed his friend and he ends up becoming partners with this young girl Stephanie who is the one telling the story her uncle is the one who was murdered and they team up together to figure out why he was murdered it was just a really fantastic story it's like a middle grade story and I just had a lot of fun looking at this magic system seeing skullduggery and just it was I like I see why there is a fandom about it so yeah and the last book that I read this month is Lauren Oliver's Rooms I haven't actually finished this book yet I'm still currently reading it today on the last day of January but uh, it's not a very long book so I suspect I'm going to finish it this book is is a book about a family who's the the estranged husband of this woman dies so her and her two children and their granddaughter they all go to the house that he owned and they're doing stuff with his estate and just figuring it out and their family is like really messed up but in this house there are two female ghosts who are haunting it and they're listening in on the family and they're like sharing their backstory of like when they were alive and stuff like that at the moment I'm not really enjoying this book I find the characters highly irritating and grating but there's enough of like the backstory and stuff that I'm like intrigued but I just I'm like over here like 
do people actually think and act like that is that a normal thing i don't know because i don't leave my room often enough to talk to people and figure out how they work uh so when i read certain books i'm just like wait that that would be a person that i would meet like really mm, okay fine but it's okay and i like the supernatural aspect but like some of the characters are just really irritating to me and i just end up going ah! because of their decisions so yeah so those are all of the books that i read i have no idea how long this video is i tried to keep my like thoughts really short so that this video won't be 30 minutes long maybe like 20 minutes long or something so I'm hoping that in the following months that I continue to read a lot of books and hopefully shoot for 20 every month. I know that sounds like a lot, but as I told you in my stats, a majority of my books that I read are on audiobook, which I have a lot more time for. So I end up getting in a lot of books during the month. I'm going to try to see whether or not I want to break down my wrap ups and do two of them a month, or I'm just going to try to shove all of those books into one video at the end of the month. That's still up for debate. But if you've read any of these books and you also love them or you're kind of irritated by them, or like you're just interested in them, then comment down below and let me know because I just I want to know how many of you have read books that I have also read because I feel like I don't read the books that everyone else is reads but then some books I'm like oh yeah like everyone reads that but other books I'm like I literally hear no one talk about this book can someone talk about this book so like just tell me tell me if you've ever read these if you like what you're seeing here and you want to continue to see more click all those bunny buttons down below and goodbye internet